Uh, I will do a short talk. It's 15 minutes talk, uh, and I will not go into depth about shares, how it works in Unity, because it's too big, and I don't really know that much about it. Um, just starting myself with this kind of stuff, and the purpose of this talk is to kind of for you that know how to code but don't really know what to do with this shader stuff. So you kind of make use of your current intuition for programming to transfer it to the GPU realm. So this is uh, the example. It's not very easy to see, but there's a lot of cars here. Uh, and I'll start just with a standard Unity example. Uh, and then we'll transform that into the GPU. So we have a Unity script, and there's a quad here, there's the car, and the script has four. Uh, I don't know it's the now. The speed is the speed variation, because we don't want all the cars to have exactly the same speed for set support. And we have a, have a width and a depth of the field with all the cars. Uh, and this is what the script looks like. We have the star function. So here we create a mesh. And the texture has a lot of cars on it to get different colors of the cars. So we randomize the sprites. And we make the, the billboards around 4 meters. And then we set the states. So we have three variables. Uh, one is the, just the position and depth. The position in uh, x, where on the field, and how fast it's going. And uh, there's nothing special about this except for this, and this is just to make it centered on the local position in the field. And then we go to update. And here, each frame, we just add the current speed to the delta time, and then when it goes too far, we just take it to the other side of the screen. And basically, it looks like this. So now the width is set to very small. So it just goes maybe 10 meters and then it flips back. So it's a very simple example. And I try to describe how you can transfer this animation to put on the GPU. Uh, and in Unity, you have a few options. They are quite intimidating. <laughs> uh, and it looks like this one is the simplest, but it's not. Because this has all, all the Unity shader models, with bump maps and lighting and all of that. So these are actually simpler. And the difference is not a lot. It's just uh, this one has fog, fog, and this one doesn't. And we will we'll use this one without fog. So what is the shader? I just strip away all the, there's a lot of details. I just go for the basics here. So we have variables, and we have them both in the kind of the shader, and we also have them in this kind of properties list. And they will show up in the, in the unity pane. So you can access these values and see how they change on screen. And then you just have these two functions, one for the vertex, and one for each pixel. So, if we want to animate all these cars in parallel on the GPU, we need them to be in the same draw call and to be able to get any of these callbacks for the vertex and the, so we can do anything at all, we need to have a mesh. So then we can ask, what does 1000 unanimated objects look like? And you can do this in many ways. And I just choose to do this. It's just a kind of cube, and I just create uh, quads. And this is not done on the GPU. This is something you do in init in your usual Unity code. Uh, and now we have to come to the actual problems. <laughs> so we can't run the code we had before on the GPU. First, we don't have an object callback like. It would be nice to be able to do a calculation per quad, like we want to animate each car. But we can't, we just get per vertex. And 
this sounds crazy, but we just do the work again. We just do it four times. Four times the work. And then how do we know if we are processing a vertex which quad we are processing? And for this, we'll use the C value. Because if you look, they, a quad, they always have the same depth. And there is no random function on the GPU. And then we'll use a hash function and a unique value per object. And this hash function is actually the C value. It's not harder than that. And this is the hardest part. Now we have to rewrite the code without state. So in the beginning, we had variables like current position, current speed, and current. You can't have anything with current. Because you can't write to anything in this shape. You can just output the new vertex. So if we look at the code, let's strip it down to the sim simplest form. We randomize, and then we add the speed with the delta. And we just move the initiation into the actual update. So here, instead of the random, we have the hash. We're pushing the unique value. And then, instead of having the delta, we use uh, time seconds from the beginning of the game and the initial position. So now we have, we can calculate the position without any state. And I actually removed one thing here to make it simpler. So now it will just continue past the screen. It never wraps back. And to do this, we'll use the modulo function. Because if we use the if function, we'll just snap back once and then we have the problem again. The modular function is like a remainder of the vision if you don't want to lose. And this we add and subtract just to have it around the center of the transforming unit. Uh, so here is a kind of more of a complete uh, version. So here we get the vertex in and we position, and then here we get the unique value, which is just the C value, and this is actually constant in unity, just time one, you get the time in seconds. And this is actually the same code we saw before. So the simplified code, you can run it on the GPU and the, the CPU, but you have to do a lot, all of these things around to make it work. Uh, um, yeah, th this one is also a bit different because here we, we have the random value we use the hash instead with the, and then we want another uh, random value for the variations of the speed and then we can't use the same because then we'll get the same random value we want a unique random value and then we have to just add a constant to the hash, hash function and we'll get a unique value And this is actually generated by Unity. So you, it's just the actual transform, so it will be at the right place related to the camera. And a real example I made that you can download on GitHub, it actually has a lot of other stuff going on. And it's still 10 times faster than the CPU version. So we do. 10 times the work, and it's still 10 times faster. But that doesn't mean <coughs> the GPU is that fast. Because a lot of these things have to do with our architecture. So when you move an object in Unity, Unity has to sort all these objects. Like, and with the GPU, I actually just sort like this. I just make sure I prepare the, the quads in, in order. So then you don't have to do any sorting. So this kind of runs with 15,000 cars on the year beyond. And if you do it in CPU, it will start giving you problems very like three or four thousand something. Uh, questions? Yes, sir. 
trying before, the shaders for uh, OpenGL shaders or DirectX shaders? What, what's the difference? Is it between uh, Unity shaders, the language, or...? I don't really have a lot of experience with shaders. Uh, I, I did some WebGL shaders, and it's basically the same. So I think if you're doing the surface shaders, like the short ones with all the Unity special stuff, then, then it's very different. Because then you kind of have to learn this, what, the, the bump, the specular, these this kind of fields, the lightning models in, in Unity. But I, I don't know much about them, sorry. But when you go to down to this low level, it, they're basically the same, because it's basically just doing the hardware stuff. So one of, one of the things I'm noticing is that you are dealing with static game objects. Does that automatically mean when you were benchmarking, could you tell that these things were actually being included in the static batch? Um, um, it did dynamic batching uh, when I did the CPU version. Okay. Because otherwise, it would have died much faster. Because you can't have like 3,000 batches, like that's impossible. For the gear, like you, it's recommended like 100, 200, right? So, and, and I also could see in the profiler that it does batches very good in the So it does segment the batches, but it batches them all at entry, like it's just very large batches. Um, I think the problem is, is like, you, even if you do very little, you can't do it 15,000 times on the CPU. It doesn't matter how little you do, you just can't do that much on the CPU if you are on the low spec system. But it's final desktop. Um, so it's, yeah, it's more unpredictable. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know, but I feel it, it has a lot to do with architecture. Because even if it has to do calling, it has to do sorting. And all of this is fixing the time. So that's the main speed. Any more questions? So why are you particularly interested in GPU uh, GPU coding right now? What is your plan? Where are you planning to use it? I just do it for fun. No, <laughs> no I but for mobile VR, you know. Yeah, it's very good to get this performance boost, especially for VR. Uh, it, it makes some effects possible that you would not be able to do unless you call them. And I, for me personally, I feel it's kind of, it makes the, the code more interesting because you have to do more like mathematics. You have to generate a function rather than update state and I think like an update. It's yeah, it's, it's more pure. It's also very annoying sometimes, but I mean, it's, it's a nice change. And then, uh, question, so, so what tools do you, I mean, what method do you do when you're debugging CPU, especially in mobile VR? Because you need to, actually it's the same thing as mobile, but I guess, is it? I don't do debugging. What? You don't do GPU <laughs> debugging? How come? How? Why? Wow. So your, your program, your GPU, JS code got no bug at all. <laughs> okay. You need to be careful. Okay. So, but, but the thing with GPU you is different it's, it's very easy to, <laughs> to switch. When you do uh, the C sharp stuff, right. you, you need to start the application. And, and when, when you do the GPU stuff, you just alt tab. And it's flush automatically all, all the time. It's, it's so fast the, the feedback. So it's, it's actually quite nice to work with the shaders. And, right. and the way I do it, I just change. But, but then sometimes you get the like black screen and stuff like that, right? Like, yeah, they turn. Uh, I mean black. Yeah. They they turn purple when it's not purple. purple. Yes. But then it's syntax error. So the hard hard part is when you have a behavior that you don't expect. Yes. 
But I mean, you just have to change a little at a time. So instead of writing the whole shader, you begin with something that's kind of an embryo, and then you change one line at a time, and you make sure you check it often. You make it sound so easy, but actually it's not easy. <laughs> at least for me. But another thing you could do, like I did now, you can actually start with a, a, a Unity version, like a C sharp version right. that you can debug. And then you can convert it into a form that's deterministic. Right. And then you can convert that one into a GPU. you have verified it actually works okay. before we actually move it to GPU. Yeah, makes sense. Thank you. All right. Thank you.